Next question. A 28-year-old female undergoes a closing wedge high tibial osteotomy for medial compartment uh, arthritis after a meniscectomy. Post-surgically, she reported improvement in her medial pain and resumed normal activities. About nine months later, however, she started having burning pain in the front of her knee with running. Her exam reveals no significant medial joint line tenderness. That's resolved. She has mild pain with patellar compression test and, and is limited with gliding maneuvers of the patella. What is the most likely cause of her symptoms? Patellar Baja following the osteotomy, patellar Alta, recurrence of medial joint overload or non-union of the osteotomy. Well, the example, or the answer, correct answer is patellar Baja, because after high tibial osteotomy, particularly in those patients that were immobilized after a closing wedge osteotomy, patellar Baja is a common finding and subsequent anterior knee pain can occur. Let's talk about patellar Baja in closing. Patellar Baja is characterized by lowering of the patella relative to its normal position. And it may be congenital or acquired. And obviously, it is the acquired type that we have control over as surgeons. The most common causes are patients that have had the proximal tibial osteotomy, as I have just discussed can also be caused by shortening of the patellar tendon itself during the high tibial osteotomy or scarring of the tendon postoperatively. You can also get uh, patellar Baja from tibial tubercle transfer procedures, particularly the old Hauser procedure where they advanced it medially and distally. You can get Baja from trauma to the proximal tibia or a technical error during primary total knee replacement. Typically, if we, the surgeon, have excessively elevated the joint line. And also, you can see patellar Baja following ACL reconstruction. Um, in total knee arthroplasty, it's an important consideration if you have, be it acquired or congenital Baja, because improper technique may cause the Baja to get worse. And there are numerous techniques which I will discuss when performing a total knee arthroplasty in patients that have Baja. What are the symptoms typically of a patient like this that you see in the lateral x-ray on your right? They typically, in flexion, get more anterior impingement and anterior knee pain. And often, this is associated with knee stiffness. On physical exam, you may actually see that they truly have a mechanical block to higher degrees of flexion. And again, this is due to patellar impingement, often on the anterior aspect of the tibial insert or tray. If you're going to assess for patellar Baja, obviously the classic assessment is the in-cell-cell body ratio, in which you get a lateral view of the knee in 30 degrees of flexion, and this ratio measures the height of the patella relative to the height of, or the length of the patellar ligament. Normally, this has been described as a one-to-one -one ratio between the length of the patellar height and tendon. Next question. A 25-year-old healthy active male undergoes a lateral closing wedge high tibial osteotomy, which Follow, uh, the following complaints are most commonly associated with this procedure. Joint laxity, infection, anterior knee pain, quad weakness, or quad or correction limb lengthening. And again, the most common thing after a high tibial osteotomy, particularly a lateral closing wedge, uh, is Baja with subsequent anterior knee pain. Well, how do you treat patellar Baja? Um, well, non-operative, you try activity modifications, particularly those activities which are high loading on the patellofemoral joint. Obviously, those are stair walking, squatting, and kneeling. You certainly can try physical therapy to try to st strengthen the uh, quad. I haven't found this to be terribly helpful in symptomatic patellar Baja. 
an operative treatment. If you're going to do a total knee replacement for uh, severe patellar baja, this can be entertained uh, pretty much more in those uh, 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 older patients that have associated arthritis with severe impingement due to their patellar baja. Um, other ways to address Baja during total knee arthroplasty is one, try to place your patellar button as superior as possible. This usually is very helpful and, and works well in cases of mild Baja. And often here, you will select a smaller patellar button such that you can have the dome portion placed more superior and then you can subsequently trim some of the inferior bone that is uncovered by the small superiorly placed button to decrease flexion impingement. Other efforts you can do is to try to lower the joint line. Obviously, one of the things you don't want to do if you have Baja is over-resect that uh, tibia. Uh, sometimes in cases, and this is actually a case that I actually did last week. This was a gal that actually had an unstable uh, uh, total knee with severe Baja. She had multiplane instability, which I obviously could correct, but my other issue is what to go ahead and do with the patellar button. In cases like this, I, I obviously tried to remove no femoral bone and added distal femoral augmentation to lower my joint line. You can go ahead and cut a bit more proximal tibia uh, to allow this to lower your joint line. Uh, you certainly want to avoid bone cuts that raise the joint line because it makes your Baja worse. And I will tell you, uh, I'm not going to put this in print, uh, but I've done this a number of times in these severe Baja cases. Um, while uh, I didn't revise her patellar button, it was already a small button in a superior position, but I actually went ahead and trimmed three millimeters from the uh, inferior aspect of the button. I've done this a number of times. You don't want to trim too much. You don't want to get into the area of the fixation pegs because that could affect the, the fixation. But in this case, uh, I lowered her joint line. I trimmed about three millimeters of the inferior aspect, and I could flex her then to 125 degrees with no impingement of my patellar button on the anterior tibia. In closing, uh, let's talk about transfer of the tibial tubercle, uh, where you actually do a tibial tubercle transfer to a more superior cephalad position. Um, I think here you'd only do this in more moderate patellar Baja. I've done this a few times. Overall, I think I've, I've gained maybe five millimeters. I don't think you'll ever be able to gain more than a centimeter. Uh, in my hands, it's been a bit unpredictable, and you do encounter the complications associated with the tibial tubercle osteotomy. In cases of very severe Baja, you can consider a patelectomy. Um, obviously, the downside of doing a patelectomy is that uh, the patella is a fulcrum, and it lowers the joint, uh, or it lowers the uh, the Q, the, the uh, um, uh, it lowers the tension in the extensor mechanism, and you can subsequently have uh, weakness of your quad. Uh, most people in patelectomized knees are recommending use of a cruciate substituting system. Um, uh, and usually what I will do is I try not to do a total patelectomy. I'll do a partial patelectomy where I remove the articular surface, kind of flush with the tendons, leaving a resected width of about 10 to 12 millimeters. I've found this is usually pretty helpful. Uh, if you ever go back on one of these, usually a fibrous uh, covering of the patella will subsequently occur. It lessens the impingement. In most cases, they don't have much crepitus, and you still are leaving some fulcrum to uh, help maintain some of the moment arm of the quadricep. Um, when I have done this uh, uh, in my career, uh, usually we get rid of most of the crepitus. Uh, they may still have some uh, anterior knee pain when going up and down stairs. 
So we'll finish with a couple questions. 70-year-old uh, female, persistent anterior knee pain and stiffness 10 months after uh, total knee arthroplasty with an associated lateral release. You can see the radiographs here in figures A and B. Preoperatively, her insol salvati ratio was close to normal at 0 0.95 compared to 0.76 postoperatively. Which of the following is the most likely cause of this lowering of the insol salvati ratio? Is it notching of the femur, excessive resection of the femur, and lateral release of the patella? Is it preoperative patellar baja? Is it excessive release of the patellar ligament from the tibial tubercle or excessive resection of the proximal tibia? Well, here again, the answer is excessive resection of the distal femur, which has elevated the joint line, given her the Baja, with the associated lateral release of the patella. There is literature to show that, again, lateral release can sometimes go ahead and accentuate this problem. Another question, self-assessment exam. You can see this uh, AP radiograph of a patient who underwent a previous upper tibial osteotomy. Patient who has had this may be at risk for what if you do a total knee arthroplasty? Bone loss, patellar alta, myositis ossificans, fracture, or instability. And the correct answer here is instability. If you look at that, uh, go back to that x-ray and study, uh, the patient was left with significant obliquity of the joint line, which subsequently can go ahead and risk instability associated with your knee arthroplasty. Lastly, what is the most frequent complication of both a lateral closing wedge, high tibial osteotomy, as well as medial uh, Opening wedge osteotomy, patellar baja, fracture, perineal nerve palsy, compartment syndrome, or infection. And again, the answer is patellar baja, as we have discussed. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.